Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. A uh, few quick announcements. Uh, there's a snow removal sign up sheet downstairs in the, the parish hall. So if you want to sign up early and hope you don't have to scoop snow, now would be the time. Although I was talking to folks last week when we had it down there, you might jinx yourself. So just, just be prepared to sign up. It might snow. I don't know. I hope not, but nonetheless, shovel out your own grace. Um, also, next week is Harvest Fest, Ludicrous Dinner, Misty Cop is coming to play music. Uh, be excited, tell your friends. Uh, related to that, the squash has arrived, so if you have volunteered to bake the squash, please collect your materials from downstairs and bring it back accordingly. Um, confirmation this week, Sunday school this week, uh, no Sunday school next week because in between there will be a lot going on. Uh, but if you also, in terms of Sunday school, if you'd like to be a teacher, let me know. Uh, National Youth Gathering, uh, this is one of the last calls for any interested parties. Uh, deposits are due in the last day to pull out is coming soon, so if it, anybody ate, through 12th grade right now, interested in the youth gathering, let me know uh, as soon as possible. Um, also, next, wed next Wednesday, we're going to try another family fun night. The first one was a big hit, so we're going to try to do it again. Uh, this time we're going to be focusing on Advent, um, because Advent starts at the end of the month, and so I have this grand idea in my head about what we could do, and we'll see if we can make it happen. So that's next Wednesday at 6 o'clock here. We'll have food, fellowship, fun, and probably a mess. Um, also in November is the lead up, as you know, as I just mentioned, to Christmas. So sometime in the next few weeks, we'll be start preparing for the Christmas program, which is tentatively scheduled for December 12th the second Sunday of December. Um, so Sunday school kids, confirmation kids, anybody wants to be involved with that, just start getting prepared. Um, also, we have a bunch of Centennial glassware uh, from the, I think it was the 100th anniversary. We have plates and ornaments. If you didn't get one uh, in 2009 when we celebrated, and you would like one, let me know. Uh, there's plenty to go around. Um, with that, any other announcements for the good of the order? Seeing none, let's just take a moment, prepare our hearts and minds for the rest of worship. Please rise for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join us in singing our gathering song, All Are Welcome.
Let us pray. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. rise for the Son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. 
Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So, believe it or not, I do a lot of thinking. Most of the time it's out loud to my wife in the car as we drive to Grand Forks or Fargo because it always helps to have an unconditionally captive audience. There is no escape in the car on the highway. But I also like to read and I like to listen to music even though I don't find myself doing each of the, either of these as much as I used to. Even though I'm no longer in school and can read whatever I want as the spirit leads. And these two activities, three if you count listening, thinking and reading often take me to places that I've never been to before. Which is really interesting. It allows me to dive deep into thought experiments, learn new things, expose myself to new ideas, and sometimes have a little fun too. And I know, I know, what are you, you're thinking, what are you talking about, Pastor Andy? What does this have to do with anything? Like usual, the opening tidbits seem random. But let me tell you what I'm talking about. Or at least give it a try. There comes a time when we, as Christians, as people of faith, as Americans, as anything you might identify as, to take a look at what it is we're up to in the world. There comes a time when you must take account for your actions, your thoughts, your longings and desires, your possessions, your life as it is. Now I'm not talking about the image of standing before the pearly gates, talking to St. Peter, you know, trying to bargain your way into heaven type stuff. Although I have to say if that helps you get there, then by all means that's what I'm talking about taking account of your life. But in taking account of your life, you notice patterns, significant events, seemingly unsignificant events, people, places, things, all of the possible nouns. And when you do that, what do you make of it? What sticks out in your mind? What were your motivations? What made you do it? Who did you do it with? These are the types of questions that I tend to ask when I read the Bible, too. Because the Bible is a collection of ancient writings of people doing just that. They're taking account of their lives, taking notes about what happened, specifically within the arena of their relationship to God. They were people living in a place with other people who were doing things and trying to figure out what it meant to be alive, what it meant to be human, what it meant to be a child of God, what it even meant to believe in the God of Israel as opposed to all the other gods that were floating about at the time. And as you read through the scriptures, you're allowed to enter into an ongoing narrative about people who are trying to figure things out just like we are. They have questions, comments, concerns, joys, sorrows, pain, and despair. Just like us. I would ask you to raise your hands if you agree, but I know you wouldn't anyway, because you're all stubborn Lutherans and don't participate in worship outside of the bulletin, so don't worry. No participation points today. But what matters is what we choose to pay attention to. What we choose to focus on matters. Take, for instance, today's psalm. Psalm 126 is among the relatively small number of psalms for which the context is both fairly certain and highly useful. The psalm's opening line refers to a time when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, and verses 1 through 3 describe the people's memory and experience of that time. There's a reference to the return of Judite exiles from Babylonia and the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem during the latter half of the 6th century, which is celebrated in the psalm as an occasion of joy so intense as to be dreamlike. And as an instance of God's restorative power so impressive that even the surrounding nations took note of it. It was magical, if you will. So this restoration of the people on a grand scale 
is the essential background of the song. It was a coming home song. We're returning to whence we came. And all the people have to say here is conditioned by their memory of the most stunning turn from a life of suffering and exile under the just punishment of God to a life rejoicing in Zion under God's favor. It's because the people remember that God has acted in this way in the past that they can pray, like in verse 4, for a similar restoration in their own current situation. It is clear that the recollection of the dramatic events of their return from exile lent confidence to the people's prayer. This is what happens when you take account of your life and pay attention to the God moment. Those moments when God moved on your behalf, where God touched your life in an unexpected way, or walked with you in the darkest of moments. You can anticipate the same thing happening again. You can walk confidently into the next moment knowing that God is always with you. My mind flashes to the popular funeral verses from Ecclesiastes 3, where the author proclaims that there is a time for everything under heaven. Sowing and reaping, living and dying, laughing and crying, you name it, there's a time for it under the sun. However, what it doesn't say is that you're stuck there. If you find yourself in a time of weeping and darkness, there's a time for laughter and sunshine as well. It might not be right now, it might not be tomorrow, but I hate quippy feel-good phrases but what comes to mind in that joy comes in the morning. Every breath we take is a gift from God, and each moment is just as precious. I see it as an opportunity to keep pushing forward into the kingdom of God, keep forging new paths into the world to make it just a little bit better than it was when I opened my eyes. That's what I want you to hear this morning. That's the good news that I have for you today. There is a God who is welcoming, caring, and courageous, walking with each and every one of you. Now I know some of you may not believe me. Some of you may not be able to quite see it clearly. Some of you may in fact know exactly what I'm talking about. But regardless of where you land in terms of believing me or not, Jesus is calling out, bring them here like he did with Bartimaeus in the Gospel this morning. God hears you crying out and calls you forward. God hears you laughing and wants in on the joke. God sees you struggling with whatever baggage you're carrying today and wants to lighten the load. I want to amplify that for you today. I want to be a beacon of hope for your journey along the way. The world, more often than not, would rather stand as a barrier tell you to be quiet, to go it alone, and keep being a beggar like our friend Bart. They stood there and told him to silence himself so as to not interfere with the agenda that they had going with their posse. There was no time to stop for a lowly beggar. There were far more important people to deal with. And Jesus said, not so. Jesus stopped, stood still, and told them to call him over. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The beggar was welcomed to approach Jesus, and he was ushered into his presence. Maybe because he knew who Jesus was, maybe because he was loud and obnoxious, and the squeaky wheel gets the grease. It doesn't say. But Bart was welcomed in and served. Jesus came to serve, not to be served. We are the recipients of that service. Jesus came to heal and not destroy, and we are the recipients of that healing. And Jesus came to restore the kingdom of God, and we are witnesses to that restoration. We are co-creators with God in making this a new place, a better place, one baby step at a time, just a little bit better, just a little bit nicer, just a little bit cleaner. And all of this reminded me of a song, because like I mentioned in the random opening, I listen to music a lot, and this song 
I'm not going to sing it because I don't, I don't do that either. Um, but I'm going to read the words, and it's rather poetic, and it's aptly titled Hope by a band named called Hands. And it goes like this. All my life I've been searching, face by face and day by day. I've walked a hundred shorelines, but all my footprints have been taken by the waves. I've trusted and I've loved. I've reached out time and time again. I've lied and I've betrayed. I've whispered evil things to the wind. Everything I've seen or felt or heard has left me with no purpose or meaning or reason. But were I to curse God and die, that would be the ultimate treason. Though I feel so dead, even though I'm alive, it's the things I've done that I can never deny. I met a man the other day, as he pulled me aside, he told me a story, with a fire burning in his eyes. He said, I know who you are, and I know where you've been. I've walked the same shorelines, and I've felt the same winds. I've lied, and I've betrayed, and I've said evil things. I put my trust in the world, and I know what it brings. I remember my wife, and the love that we shared, and the smile on her face, and the smell of her hair. On the day that we met, I was dead inside. And then she spoke these words, fire burning in her eyes. The Lord knows who you are, and he knows where you've been. He keeps an eye on the shores and his ears to the wind. When you make your bed in a pit of the hell, he'll stay by your side and he'll love you still. Well, it's been five years that she's been gone, I've given you her words that you might carry them on. This is love. This is hope. Amen. And now I invite you to sing along with us our hymn of the day, Jesus Calls Us, or the Tongue. Now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. 
Holy Lord, we give you thanks for churches throughout the world that serve as centers of prayer and action. Empower missionaries, teachers, healers, evangelists, and all who are sent to share your song of joy. Hear us, O God. Giving, Lord, we give you thanks for generous land that produces abundant harvest. Strengthen and protect all soils from rooftop gardens to prairie farmlands, to patio planters, to fertile valleys, and bless all who lovingly tend them. Hear us, O God. Wise Lord, we pray that you give us leaders who truly care for the needs of their people. Strengthen them to resist the temptation of power and work for the good of all mankind. Hear us, O God. Healing Lord, we give you thanks for all who labor for the health of others. Comfort and strengthen all who suffer with chronic pain, sending healing and relief to all who are sick. Hear us, O God. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Feel free to share a sign of God's peace with one another as you feel comfortable. Now remember, salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O God, for the universe. Just and true are your ways. O ruler of all nations, who can fail to honor you, Lord, and sing the glory of your name? Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ, the Lamb, forever and ever. For you alone are the Holy One, and blessed is the one whose name is the Word of God. All praise and thanks to you, Holy God. Salvation belongs to our God and Christ, the Lamb, forever and ever. And let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give you thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feet. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now please join us in singing our singing song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound.
peace, share the good news.